and when you're in a dyno room tuning a bike, you'll find both, and it's kind of a strange thing, but when you, you back off the throttle and you get a popping constantly. If there's too much fuel, what happens is, is the fuel gets by and it's not burnt, comes through the exhaust and it, it's ignited by the next charge and you'll get a, a decel pop. And it's just raw fuel igniting in the exhaust. Because it's burning too much? Well, that's one problem. The other one is if it's too lean, you're actually getting lean, you know, your, your headers and all are so lean that any raw fuel that comes out ignites right in the exhaust. So I would say nowadays 90% of, of the diesel pop I can get rid of by taking fuel away from 30% down. Now in the earlier days when you didn't have O2 sensors, I had to go through and I would start maybe take 2% at 40, 1% at 30 and see if it changed. If it didn't change, then I went the opposite. I started added fuel at 0% and 1%. Because you, you can't, every time you think you've got a handle on it, you start spending an hour or two trying to tune, and then you come back and you add double or take away double what you just put in and it goes away. Was it just trial and error pretty much? Yeah, you, you know, the later bikes almost always <coughs> you want to take fuel away down low. And that's only, uh, if you look at most all the new bikes, when you're on the throttle, even the, at idle, it's running just under 30% uh, on map load. I know I'm getting way out here with stuff. But, and that's what we're looking at is how much map load. And that's where I'm gonna take fuel in and out of. So when it does decide to cause a pop, there's nothing there to pop and you just get exhaust. Uh, and some exhaust is just like a thunderheader. Absolutely impossible to get rid of all the, I could spend nine years <laughs> and I'll never get rid of all this because of the design of the pipe. Uh, Vance and Hines, some of their mufflers, I have a really hard time getting rid of all the diesel. Uh, two into ones, depending on the brand, and depending on the collector, makes it harder and not to get some of the D cell. What, what is that? Uh, two and the one sometimes will feed off of each other. So if the rear, if the rear exhaust is pulling, it'll actually pull at the on overlap. And overlap is when they're both open at the same time for just a split second. The one will actually pull from the other one. Well, if it pulls raw fuel out. <laughs> Well, we're sitting there taking fuel away to the point that it's not running good anymore, but you still have a diesel block. So <laughs> there's just some exhaust. You just almost have to live with some. And some guys, you know, some of it isn't. My bike diesel pops like hell uh, down low. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. It's not hurting a thing. Some guys just can't stand it. You know, they get two pops and they're in here. I got to get rid of this. Do something. And then I, use, I always go out and try to make sure what the problem is before I try to tune it. Uh, because sometimes I just flat can't get it out. So if you got rid of the crossover, they get rid of that? Pull into the other one? You know, uh, wind? Depending on the, the crossover, that can help. And sometimes that can hurt you. Uh, if you're running a true two into two exhaust, a lot of times you'll, the D cell pop you're hearing is usually from the rear cylinder because the rear cylinder always runs richer than the front cylinder. And it's by design, they're always running a little richer because it's behind the other one so they're trying to cool it down a little more. Uh, with a crossover, that helps because it equalizes 